A new world order has been unleashed. Change is the new constant, and constant is the new change. Disruption is the new constant, and constant is the new disruption. Massive political, economic, technological, and social forces are at play, making much that we know as usual increasingly irrelevant and indeed each day increasingly obsolete. Communities at crossroads change the thinking, change the future. Adopting the established protocol, distinguished guests, good evening. Our communities are now at multiple crossroads and we must mindfully reflect on the current dynamics, take stock and intentionally and proactively decide what choices we need to make as a nation. As part of a wider network of nations, to carve out a desired and sustainable package of quality of life elements on all fronts for our people. Where do we want to go? What road will we trod? What choices can we create for ourselves? What areas do we prioritize? How do we survive, navigate, thrive sustainably in a world of increasing unpredictability, unprecedented change, and disruption? If we simply go with the flow, or do what we've always done, and make no hard and bold decisions, we in fact give up our right to chart our destiny and lay the foundation for generations to follow. Indecision or no decision is in fact a very strong and categoric decision to hold no voice, no sway in how our future unfolds. There is utter and profound turbulence in all facets of our socio-economic, technological, environmental and geopolitical space. Our national borders are imaginary. They are merely in our minds and they cannot draw the line of the now condensed, interconnected, rapidly changing wider world. Global trends offer considerable new opportunities to countries, sectors, companies, NGOs, and individuals that embrace them successfully. But conversely, the downside for those who cannot keep up or who are unprepared is really bad news. And if we're not agile and ahead of the curve, these realities will trickle down to the very quality of life of our citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in an era of disruption where powerful worldwide forces are changing how we live, breathe, and work. The rise of China, India, and other emerging economies, the rapid spread of digital technologies, the growing challenges to globalization, and the fracturing of long-held alliances are throwing major tantrums which forever change the face of our communities. Close your eyes and focus on a few scenes and snapshots of the current world order on a macro level. Big picture, what is really going on? Politically, the legacy of careful consensus building leaders is replaced by populist risk takers willing to roll us at the dice with little strategized calculation of the outcome and impact of their decisions. Some powerful nations are emphatically choosing to become more isolationist and break away from cooperative ties. Some other nations are fervently creating linkages with others in an attempt to enhance opportunities and break cycles of poverty and underdevelopment. What's happening economically? Significant shifts are unfolding. Changing demographics, national policies, and dynamic markets are throwing curveballs and creating unprecedented shifts in which nations experience growth and which experience decline. Emerging economies led by China and India have accounted for almost two thirds of global GDP growth and more than half of consumption in the past 15 years. Economic power bases are shifting. Environmentally, global warming, rising sea levels, acidification of the oceans, bleaching of corals, deforestation, and associated wildfires, soil erosion, the release of toxic chemicals, the consequent contamination of our food chain, the loss of bio, bio, 
of biological diversity are for real. Ladies and gentlemen, major shifts are happening in the world which have critical implications for how we live in Anguilla. At this crossroad, it is imperative that we intentionally reflect on the way we think, our collective, our national collective and individual mindsets. We need to actively embrace the mindset advantage so that our mental frame can positively determine our behavior, performance and success. Change the thinking, change the future. We need to use our small size, our advantage, to be nimble, decisive, and action-oriented. We need to reframe our minds and redirect the tendency we have to impose limitations on ourselves because of our size. Ask David how he showed the life that small size, combined with carefully considered and executed strategy, can move and shape the world. Mindset is everything. Mindset coupled with consistent action is the key to achieving and sustaining success. The mind, our very pattern of thinking, steers decisions and resulting actions. Gandhi once observed, your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your words. Your, your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values and your values become your destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, success always starts in the mind, each and every time. We have to strategically and actively commit to adopting a mental frame, a thinking, a lens, that organizes and encodes what we perceive in a way that will bring positive returns to the overall and sustainable quality of life of all people, generationally. Indeed, our thinking will dictate our actions to change our future. So, how do we move ahead? How do we embrace our strengths of being a small, close-knit, proud, resilient, entrepreneurial nation and leverage key opportunities to position ourselves to access excellent and sustainable quality of life for our people, generationally? Investment in research and knowledge is critical to inform our thinking. Easy for us today with the widespread internet resources. We must be open to new ideas and pay keen attention to emerging best practices and the pitfalls around the world to help inform our own policies and plans for our nations. Examine case studies of other emerging and developing countries add our unique flavor from our culture and our history and make fruitful decisions for our homes, businesses, community, and country. As a nation, we need to embrace a shift in paradigm, a multi-dimensional collaborative mindset to navigate the external turbulence and increase our threshold of performance and success in all areas. These tools of adjusting the mindset are powerful forces across the board. They can apply to an individual like you and me, a company, an NGO, a government, a grassroots community group, a nation, all of us. Let's dig in and look at a few ways as to how we in Anguilla can select change modes of thinking to reap great rewards. Change the thinking, change the future. Number one, we must think out of the box and be open to change. Thinking out of the box, simply put, refers to thinking creatively, freely, and off the beaten path. Basically, expanding our comfort zone and throwing off the shackles of, this is how we do things around here. Reality check. If we are loyal guards, always protecting the status quo of how we conventionally or traditionally think and act, and have zero or no tolerance for risk, new ideas, or any attempt to walk the boat to find a better way. We condemn ourselves to becoming obsolete. We human beings feel more comfortable with tried and tested approaches as opposed to new ways of thinking. Some of us resist change so fiercely and dramatically protecting status quo um, territory. For policymakers, business leaders, NGOs, entrepreneurs, 
families and individuals, figuring out how to navigate these turbulent times, the choice is simple. If we do not proactively embrace the will and the might to be intelligent, to be intentional and radically rethink all paradigms that are not working for us, we will simply put, succeed to fail. The outcome will be sure. We will succeed to fail. Neuroscience and psychology findings teach us that our thinking patterns and routines acquired over the course of time have virtually confined our thinking to the box, or more precisely, to a more left hemisphere dominant style of analyzing and processing information. Our communities are biased towards the analytical, mathematical, logical, linear thinking. We need to also tap into our human capacity, normally to be lodged, normally considered to be lodged in the right hemisphere of the brain, which is now commonly known as the source for artistry, music, intuition, innovation, and problem-solving skills. There's a great deal of value in disrupting conventional thought processes, breaking through complacency as a means to thinking differently about an issue at hand. How many times do we see our creative people, forward thinkers, and disruptive thought leaders in our midst being beaten down, sidelined, cast aside from the conventional groupthink? We criticize their personality, their deportment, their ideas, instead of embracing and distilling the gem of fresh insight that they bring. How many times do we see a discussion unfold and one influential person on the board slants the conversation to one way and thinking and thereby quells any conflicting ideas? This serves an empty purpose and does not lead to quality brainstorming and better decision making within groups. How can we embrace this on a practical level? There are a range of successful tools that can be used on an individual or group level to better harness quality thinking, open up possibilities. In the interest of time, I'll share two quick examples. Ideation. Ideation, known as a reinvention of traditional brainstorming, is a technique that involves both the left and right sides of the brain to allow breakthroughs from entrenched habits of thought and persistent difficult problems. Through specific tools, ideation also helps participants avoid the circular thinking of channeling ideas along a narrow path. To be successful, participants need to be able to burst out of their comfort zones of complacent conventional thinking and get into a place where big, bold, breakthrough ideas are possible. Another idea involves the engagement with various genres of the arts. For all citizens, old and young, visual, musical, performing arts, you name it. Exposure to these avenues helps people develop critical thinking and open-mindedness to cultivate creative solutions to problems. When these individual level benefits are taken in aggregate, they create improvements to the effectiveness and flexibility of a nation's workforce with positive impacts on productivity. Change the thinking, change the future. Enhancing out of the box mindsets. Number two, embracing and leveraging technology to improve productivity and efficiency. Reality check. Nearly two decades into the digital revolution, the Caribbean finds itself technologically behind. Hence, we are at crossroads. More and more traditional jobs are disappearing, and the global economy is increasingly run on knowledge and skills that require significant investment of education and digital infrastructure. We need to remove every roadblock and mind block we have in moving with technology. Leading countries are harnessing data and digital technologies to speed up modernization and the opportunity to strengthen their economies and governments by using data. Access to information is a powerful driver of progress, innovation, and participation in the global economy. Data provides the evidence needed to improve workflows, identify trends, innovate, and make the right decisions. Let us look at an example of digital technology in action in an emerging economy, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. It is one of the smartest cities in the world. That is smart city. 
Rio's city managers have improved communications with citizens by extending internet service and making interaction with the government easier through a social network designed for citizens, which helps them to discuss and propose public policies with city authorities. By allowing the public to see open and transparent data, the information helps foster good governance, responsible leadership, and agile government. Data and access to data is a critical component of transparency, accountability, and providing benchmarks to compare outcomes, creating stronger evidence-based policies. We can apply increased digital technology in boosting all functions, from enhancing our service capability in our lifeblood tourism sector, to making public sector processes much more efficient. Change the thinking, change the future. Embracing digital technology. Number three, we must nurture a culture of pragmatic action orientation. Reality check. How many times do we find ourselves stuck in analysis paralysis? <laughs> Too many of our meetings, whether private or public sector, are focused on venting and discussing, and sometimes the same issues for decades. It is so bad. It is so bad that if you look at the various minutes of too many meetings, you wouldn't know if they were from 1999 or from 2019, as the same issues repeat themselves unsolved. Overanalyzing data, overthinking a problem. We need to hold ourselves accountable from the beginning of each meeting that we will come up with actionable points, timelines, and persons only the responsibility to execute and report back. Persons who deliver should be rewarded, and persons who do not deliver should be called out. We have to guard against too much time spent planning and updating reports that end up catching dust on the shelf. If we have valuable information gathered, compiled and curated from surveys and consultancies, we need to apply a torrent of energy in selecting, prioritizing, and activating the recommendations and maintaining accountability for the delivery of outcomes. Change the thinking, change the future. Embracing an action orientation. Number four, let us redefine and develop relevant human resource development initiatives and education systems. Reality check. In our small island state, with limited and vulnerable natural resources, our human resources are the most important asset that we can develop to chart the course for the future. No gold, no oil lie beneath our soils and seas. In our region, we are suffering from education systems that are founded on outdated test-driven models with remnants of past realities. Not wanting to give away my age, but if our students are still learning in a similar style as three decades ago or maybe four, we, we have a big challenge on our hands. We have to take a hard and fast look at our school systems and educational institutes. We must be deliberate in ensuring that learning and teaching function with the end result in mind. Focus should be on progressive, interactive, engaging, motivating mentoring with high level teaching, meeting students exactly where they are at. Our children's books are full of pages and pages of handwritten notes, yet they struggle to confidently communicate on the job or put knowledge into action or transfer skills that add value. We have a big challenge. Curricula and methods of teaching and learning are still heavily based on note-taking, top-down teaching, memorization, the recall of information. This is not equipping our students with the vital skills they need to navigate careers or life itself. Our youth need to develop and constantly practice daily higher order thinking skills like critical thinking, self-confidence, and the ability to tolerate risk and respond to new and changing situations, negotiation and communication skills, and the ability and agility to transfer knowledge and skills across industry and across jobs. Emotional intelligence, EQ skills, 
are some of the most critically needed skills for today's world, and this needs to be actively nurtured by our systems. EQ encompasses the skills relating to time management, decision making, intrinsic motivation, empathy, flexibility, social skills, presentation skills, anger management, stress tolerance, and accountability. We also need to balance our focus on the traditional academic offerings and complement it with first class technical training and vocational skills and meaningful apprenticeship, apprenticeships. The relative importance that we as a society place on a particular job should be based not on tradition or heritage from colonial regimes, but rather on value delivered to the community. Businesses in Angola struggle to find technical talent to support the country's need for goods and services. If our education systems are struggling to stay relevant, our youth will not be fully equipped to properly access and leverage opportunities to make an optimal contribution to the society and economies. If pockets of entitlement, less a fair work ethic, continue to seep into our job environments, coupled with no individual internal fire for lifelong learning, we have work to do. If persons do not access opportunities through hard work and merit, but rather on the backs of family status or political ties, we have work to do. If we are unable to reverse the brain drain of our born and bred career nationals, scientists, technicians, educators, and more, and attract and absorb our university graduates into our workforce, we have work to do. If non-traditional career paths, like artists, musicians, and artisans, cannot etch a daily living in our country, or feel like misfits in our society, and have to commercialize their talents only outside of our shores, we have work to do. We must invest in strengthening our institutions for mobilizing the full energies of the entire population across genders, age, abilities, and differences by instituting a system that embraces their fullest participation in national and sectoral development plans and provides us with the necessary skills through education to enable us to all contribute meaningfully to our nation building. Fullest participation of all our people should intentionally include our diaspora and our repeat visitor friends whose love for Anguilla runs deep. This constitutes a highly patriotic and motivated group with access to skills and resources that they are willing to generously share just for the love of Anguilla. Why lose out on this treasure to mobilize towards our nation building? Change the thinking, change the future, embracing an orientation to further empower and embrace all our human resources. Number five, prioritizing sustainability of our nation environmentally. Reality check. Rising sea levels and temperatures present insurmountable challenges to our food security, tourism, and health within our Caribbean region. The figures are stark. Of the Caribbean region's 40 million strong population, 70% live on coastal areas. Tourism, which almost entirely depends on coastal resources, represents for many states 70% or more of GDP. And commercial ag agriculture, which accounts for another major chunk, is equally dependent on our climate. In the interest of vigilance and sustainability, a parallel system of national accounting that accounts for the depreciation of non-renewable resources and the depreciation of our environment as a cost of generating national income should be embraced throughout our region. The sad reality is that most of our regional governments re remain reactive or lagging behind in the critical discussion of environmental protection and climate change. And this issue is yet to receive its rightful place of importance on the region's agenda and budgets. For the Caribbean, ironically a low carbon emitter, we stand the most to lose from climate change. We in Anguilla, the wider Caribbean, in our vulnerable geographic space and place, can no longer leave these discussions and concerns to a small sideline group of environmentalists considered radicals, or to the choice and voice of large world leaders. 
We cannot allow ourselves to be left out of the conversation on the global scale, on the global stage. Forging strategic alliances on this topic is a must. Change the thinking, change the future, enhance environment, environmental stewardship, and advocacy is a must. I extend profound thanks to my alma mater, the University of the West Indies, and its value partners for coordinating and staging these critical forums for national reflection and discussion for life-changing topics for us here in Anguilla. Thank you for allowing me to share a few thoughts, and we all look forward to the compelling topics and ensuing discussions at the rest of the Anguilla Country Conference 2019. Look out for the lineup of phenomenal speakers on a range of riveting topics. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one Anguilla. We have critical decisions to make now and a maze of crossroads ahead touching all aspects of the nation's existence. Every single aspect of our quality of life, the way we breathe, the way we eat and live in the future depends <coughs> on each and every one of us and how we choose to think. We must embrace a new mindset to cope with a rapidly changing world, a thinking mode of increased reflection, collaboration, action. The creating and leveraging of powerful linkages and connections as no man or no woman is an island. We must discard any tendencies we have towards insularity or archaic thinking at each and every level and embrace the full spectrum of brilliance, talents, skills, resources available to us as we participate in building the most colorful mosaic fabric of our special home or unique island. 